going on guys this is Gavin Powers with Powerhouse Exotics back at it again with another video today and today's subject of uh, the subject of this video is actually kind of making some noise um, today we are doing a video um, video yeah, I've, I've, I've this the main animal I work with it's the animal I'm mostly known for online yet I don't make a lot of YouTube videos on them surprisingly I'm, I'm surprised I don't I work with them a lot They're the animals I had the most photos of the animals the, the exotic species I've worked with the longest the animal I founded my breeding program off of and that would be the sugar glider. Now guys, you know I am a sugar glider breeder. I breed lineage pedigree sugar gliders. So lineage is a database. It's basically like pedigree with dogs. It prevents inbreeding. Um, allows us to track who's breeding who, who carries what genetics, who comes from what bloodline, who was imported when. Uh, it traces all that down so you don't have to worry about inbreeding since such a small gene pool of gliders was brought into America in the first place. Um, but today I have Two pregnant gliders and usually I only have one pregnant glider at a time due to the fact I only have three breeding pairs I did downsize some breeding um, some of my breeding program a couple months ago um, today we're outside my gliders are adjusted being taken around with me in their pouches outside some of them I allowed to put in short small trees and shrubs uh, glider safe trees and shrubs nothing poisonous that they could eat and die from but um yes so I have two pregnant females with me they've been taken out they've not taken I'm not gonna take them fully out of the bag or anything I'm just gonna show you the reason I'm outside today is because the lighting's better and like I said, this little light, there's a little bit of a lawnmower out in the way, in the distance. Like, you know, just some ambient noise. My gliders are adjusted to that. You have to, whenever you raise, whenever I raise gliders, a lot of people don't do this. You got to ex ex expose them to slight stressors in the environment so they're adapted to these types of things. My gliders are very much used to it. Not stressed out at all. They're sitting right here. I have two breeding pairs, um, each in their own little uh, carry packs, carry pouches. So they're not really interacting. They don't really know each other's there because that could stress them out of seeing each other because they are uh, slightly territorial. But yeah, so I'm going to get into the video and I'm going to show you the first female that's pregnant. I'm going to start with the most exciting one because she's probably going to be the little, the, the one I've had, I haven't had her the longest. She's the one that's slightly more difficult to work with. However, she's not too difficult. I wouldn't keep her in my program if she was. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm going to get right into it and show you who she is. Okay, so in this carry pouch right here, we have the dad. Now, this is Ghost. Now, Ghost is an expensive glider, to say the least. He is a Carmino Mosaic. There's his girlfriend right there. Hey, Allie. Ellie is actually a black beauty. Nothing too special, just normal black beauty. I'm actually gonna close up the pouch on her. Oops, I'm, bare, I'm barefoot. She's a little bit. Just close it just so she doesn't get out and try to go exploring. This is the dad. Carmina Mosaic, he cost me around $2,500, which is actually a really good deal for this coloration. See, he's a Carmino, which they have garnet eyes, which are like a dark, dark red, but they're gonna appear brown or red on camera. You can kind of see the reddish tint to them there. He's got this gorgeous cream red color. It's, it's not as red as a mystery red or one of the red line gliders, but it's not creamy like a Cremino, which is also called a T-positive albino. Well, make, oh, Dolly is actually grabbing at me. She's the other glider we're going to get to in a minute. But he has got this, this little white spot on the back of his head. He's got white hands. He's got a gorgeous white tail. Look at that, man. And this is the proud papa of these babies, the mama uh, Ellie. She is actually a carrier for Carmino. Now, Carmino is a recessive gene. Mine are S and S line Carmino. There's two bloodlines. There's S and S. I forgot what it stands for. And there's HSG, which I believe is the Highland Sugar Gliders, developed by um, her name's Diane. I can't remember her last name. It might be, is it Robert? I think it's Robertson. Can't really remember. She's a really good breeder. Really well, really well known. Probably the most knowledgeable breeder in the in the hobby. This guy was sent to me by Maria Hartmeyer and Bailey Brazel over at. Um, Shuggy Shack and um, Blue Moon Babies, that's their two business names. They're kind of business partners, but they own their they own their own two separate businesses, but they kind of operate together. So, yeah, so yeah, they got, it's a pretty cool little neat little operation going there. Most of my gliders come from them. Really high quality breeders. I recommend you check them out on Facebook or, yeah, they mostly operate on Facebook. Look, and uh, Maria was actually my gliding, I was a fly landed on my hand, so I had to shake there. Maria was actually my breeding mentor. She taught me the ins and outs of glider genetics, how to breed them. Yeah, he wants to wants to get back to bed. So let's actually focus on the mama of these babies. I'll get to her now. Now here she is. She's a black beauty, which is really similar to a normal. Sorry, the bottom of this cage is dirty because um, one time I had to go on a long trip and I kept gliders overnight in this bag, so they kind of permanently stained the bottom of it and tore it up a little bit. But it's still a good little bag. She's a black beauty. They look like normal, but they're slightly darker. She has um, black knuckles. I can't get a good picture of. She's got a darker tail. She has a black chin strap underneath her. And I don't know, you guys can't really tell because she's quite, let me get her out actually here. I'll get back to you in a second. Now, I don't think she's going to give us a good look at her belly here, but her belly has two small little bumps on them, which is a really good sign that she is early in the stages of having joeys in her pouch. She's going to come out and hang out with me. But, um, she's going to come hang out with us. Okay. Oh. 
Let me get her back in her thing. I'm scared she might jump. She's actually hanging out on me. Just exploring, just exploring. Not too stressed out. She's just a little bit, a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous. Pretty girl. All right, all right, she's gonna get her back in her cage. No, I don't want to. She's a little bit nervous. We're gonna put her back up. Let her back in her bag. Let her get back with her husband, and let them cuddle up. Go back to sleep, and we'll get on to the next female. Or after I explain, after I explain what we could get out of this, uh, this absolutely amazing pairing. This is probably the most excited I've ever been for a glider pairing in my lifetime. She's on my back now. Hey, pretty girl. Oh, hey, pretty girl. I love this little girl. She's so sweet. Hey, pretty girl. Hey. You see the little bulge in her belly. You see her little belly drags at the back. I mean, she's got. I think she's got twins. Fingers crossed. Now I'm actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put her up now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do what I said. I'm gonna do. So we'll get back to you in a second. Okay, she's back in her little bag. She ran back. So we're actually gonna kind of close her up. Get her back in there. Okay, hold up. Okay. Now unzip the bag. She's cooperating really well. She's cooperating really well. about that, guys. Um, audio or the camera just cut out for some reason while I was loading them back up. I got them back in there so they can calm down. There's Ghost. Uh, he started crabbing on me a little bit, but like I said, there was not a lot of crabbing at all with these two in this video. Um, that is the good thing about getting your gliders from a good quality breeder. Um, a breeder who breeds for friendliness in their animals. I breed for friendliness in mine. Um, but yeah, also, that's the good thing with working with your animals often. Take them outside, get them exposed so they're not too scared, they're not too stressed, they're not frantically running around. She's just, you know, kind of a little bit curious. She's trying to go back to hide in her bed. She just spooked Ghost when she went up underneath there. She scared him a little bit and he crabbed. But yeah, like these are really well-behaved gliders. I've worked with them a ton. And honestly, when they came to me, they were about this time when they came to me. Like I said, Maria, Bailey, um, and uh, Bailey's wife, Samantha, also all great glider breeders. Quality animals all the way through. I've never, I've worked with them since 2021. Never had an issue with them. I love them. Go check them out, Shuggy Shack or Blue Moon Babies. Located in Indiana, but they can ship anywhere to any legal state in the United States um, through their uh, trans through other transportation companies. Highly recommend them. Great breeders overall. And now, now we're going to get back into the next pair. My beard is a mess because I forgot to brush it again because I, I woke up, needed a Wednesday video. Said my gliders are pregnant. I need. I want to get more glider content out there, especially since Clint's Reptiles uh, recently made a glider care video. I've been waiting for that guy to make that video for years now. The next pair is crabbing a little bit. Kirby, he's a little bit of a he's a little devil, but. He's a little spunky, but uh, like I said, I've been waiting for him to make that video for years now. And now that he's made the video, um, I feel like I should jump on the bandwagon of glider hype right now. And since that is my thing, I'm, I am the glider guy. Uh, at least for my area, I'm the glider guy. I think I should jump in and make some more glider content since I, they're my favorite animal I work with. Besides maybe my African wildcats, I like them. I might like them a little more, I'm not sure. Just because those, those basically live with me. Those are actually hanging on the house. These kind of have their own little room. I feed them, I play with them, but they don't actually live with me like my cats do. So besides this is probably my favorite animal to breed and work with because I love their genetics. Now, I actually, before we get on to the next one, I forgot to tell you what we could get out of this pairing here. Now, uh, Ghost is a Carmina Mosaic. Mosaic, it's, um, you don't need two copies of it to have it. It could pop up. Um, and Carmina is recessive. Black Beauty is, dom Blue, Black Beauty is a dominant gene. Um, so from this pairing, we could get Black Beauties, normals. There's always a possibility for normals. We can get Black Beauty Mosaics. <laughs> We could get normal mos. We can just get normal mosaics. We could get carminos, which is I'm hoping for carminos, and we could get carmino mosaics. Now that's absolutely amazing. If we do get carmino mosaics, I would love that. That's what I'm hoping for. If I get twin carmino mosaics, that'd be lovely. But whenever you get one pretty animal of a pair of gliders, you usually get one normal or a black beauty with it. Um, just a little bit. You know, you never get you never get spoiled. They don't ever spoil you that much. Um, but yeah, so that, I've got those possibilities. Uh, Ghost doesn't carry any other genes that I, I can't remember off the top of my head. And if he does carry any extra genes like Platinum, Carino, or uh, Vino, I'm pretty sure Ellie doesn't carry the exact same gene or she has a really small chance to, so it's really not likely to get those. Um, so I'm not counting on it. Uh, if there were any notable genes, I'd have brought that up just now, so I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I'm actually going to post a picture right there. There's a screenshot of their pedigrees, both of them. Their genetics, there's uh, their pedigree profiles, so you can see what they've got. But yeah, actually, we're going to get on to the next the next pair now. Now, Kirby is a little devil. Now, Kirby, he's a little devil. Hey, buddy. Now, Kirby, his genetics are, he's a normal. His brother's a ringtail mosaic. Um, I actually got him, when I bought his brother, I got him as a little add-on bonus. Um, he's really dirty because he marks a lot. Like his, like Dolly, his female, she's been marked a lot. But yeah, so he's all, he, he's 50% chance that he carries T-positive albino, also called Carmino. My neighbor's building something. Carmino T positive albino. Um, there's also a, I, I believe it's a, either 25 or, I guess 25 percent chance that he carries platinum or leucistic. Just a little small chance he carries that. Um, Dolly, I don't remember what genetics she carries. I just know she's a pied. 
a mosaic pied. She, she's white with those little gray spots. She has a really dark marker on her head, and on her, oh, there's one on her back of her shoulder that she has. Let me get her a good picture of her. She's farther along. I'll get back to you guys when I get her shown a little bit. Here she is. Look at her. Oop. She's just now waking up. Hey, pretty girl. Hey. Yeah, you can see she's really yellow. That's because he's marked her a lot. Now, yellow gliders can usually be a sign of a bad diet, but if you have breeding gliders and you have a white glider, they're going to be yellow. There's nothing you can fix. There's nothing you can really do about it. You can't really give them. You can give them baths, but it's not recommended to give them baths often. And when you do, it's for like emergency situations only. Um, she has a much larger bump on her belly that I don't want to stress her out too much by trying to get her belly shown and stress her out. But just know from this pairing, I've only ever gotten normals. Okay, I've only ever gotten normals and mosaics out of this pairing. I could also get pieds because mosaic and pied are the exact same gene in gliders. Just because piebald, just you reptile people out there. Um, and other animals in general too, usually called pied. But just for you reptile people out there, mosaic is the same as pied. Now, just because an animal is mosaic does not mean it's a pied. Pied is a mosaic that meets very specific look criteria look-wise. But um, it's the same genetics to make the, make the gene. It's just a pied is like a mosaic that has a special marker. Or um, it stands out. It's a lot more of a sharp contrast between the whites and the and the normal patching on it. A mosaic will be like a gray, like a little soft gray color with the white. Now a mosaic, uh, pied will have a really dark spot that you'll really notice off the bat. Um, and usually they don't powder out too bad. Powdering out is when usually if they carry a lighter gene such as platinum or mosaic, that causes the pied to fade into a more silver. And all obviously it'll go from silver. And eventually the glider might turn solid white. I do have a couple of powdered out mosaics. Hey Kirby. This is the quietest he's ever been. He's usually a little spunky. He doesn't bite, but he crabs a lot. But he doesn't really bite. He's just a little noisy. Hey. Camera's out. He's a little not too well behaved today. What do you? He's potentially mosaic. I'm not too sure. He's potentially a mosaic. I'm not too sure because I did breed him to a non-mosaic female. Like I said, mosaic is not a recessive gene. So when I bred him to... And on mosaic female, he bred up, he produced a mosaic baby. So there's a chance he's a very minimal mosaic. They can have so much as one white whisker and technically be a mosaic. And um, that's all it takes. And he'd, he'd be considered a low white mosaic or a minimal mosaic, as, as what the glider people would call it. I'm going to close this pouch up so he doesn't get out. So, uh, oh no, he's not getting out. Okay, nope. Can't tell. He's kind of a little unpredictable. Hey, pretty boy. Hey. Hey. Oh yeah, so. Um, we're gonna get them back inside, and uh, once they're back inside, uh, I'm gonna just give you a little little reptile update. Just nothing too fancy, just a little reptile update. I'm um, actually I'm gonna throw up right here. I have them in their little carry bags, little glider, little glider carry bags. Really cute. There's Kirby. I'm gonna give you a little reptile update on the geckos that I showed you in last uh, last video on Sunday's video. This is Wednesday's upload. I'm gonna give you a little update on those guys, and I will just get back to you guys when these guys are locked back up. And uh, see you in a minute. Little baby morning gecko being quiet because I don't want to spook him, so I don't know if you can hear me. I'll move a little closer to the mic. Little baby morning gecko, oh, yeah, he's, he's getting big, he's getting so big. There's another one in the tube somewhere. I'm gonna see if I can find him. One right there, and the other one is in that tube, and the other one's right there. So there's the two of them. There's two eggs in that one, um, one egg in that one, one egg in this, one or two eggs in that one. I can't really tell. Jeff, I'm being a little bit quiet, don't want to spook him too much. I just want to get some good camera footage of him, but yeah, uh, we're gonna skip to there. Boy in here, we're gonna give Bert his first ever super worm. See if he wants to eat it. There you go. Look at him. Look at that bad boy. Don't focus. Don't focus on the dirt in his tank. Focus. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he liked a super worm. I don't know. I don't know why he went down there. His humidity's fine. He's been moistening. I don't know why he decided to hang out at the bottom of his tank. So we can get him to move up, eh? he's fighting down that super worm all right guys well we'll get back to you later video today being followed by some goats and uh gonna walk over here gonna feed some animals oh hello she, she got excited to see us now, okay little known fact you can actually give your chickens leftovers so they love leftovers some french fries and they, they like chickens like some seasoning she took off with that french fry they like seasoning they think they can get some no you can't get none no not your french fries that's why I gotta get them some water. Oh, oh good lord. This little buff Orpington's being a little a little energetic today. Get on! You too. Yellow. She's gonna follow around the yard. I'm sorry. Okay, we're gonna go get them some I'm gonna get them some water and uh yeah, I'm not gonna be all that. Just gonna get them some water. 
I'm serious. I fill this up. They drink this all every day. It's only, what time is it? 1.30 at the time I'm recording this. I filled it up yesterday at like 4 and it's already empty again. All the way to the top. All the way to the top. They just, I don't know what they're doing. Is it, I think it might be leaking. I don't think I tightened it all the way. That might be it. I'm going to you know, get them some water. I'm not going to record that. So, Actually, I'm going to record. Lucky. No, you get back in there. I think you're a golden comet. I don't think you're a saber. I don't think you're a golden comet. Come here. Come here. There you go. I'm going to lock this door back so they don't escape. Oh, Lord. I just, there you go. With that video, make sure to like and subscribe. Just destroy that like button. And uh, I'll see you real soon. Peace.